Hi, I am Frank Tamborello. I am a traffic signal technician with the uh, state of Ohio the Department of Transportation. Uh, I've been a signal tech for uh, just about two years. I've been with ODOT for over 12 years. And uh, some of the things we do here in the traffic department, we are responsible for uh, over 100 traffic signal locations in our district, which would be uh, Cuyahoga, Lake, and Geauga counties. Um, we're also responsible for uh, roughly 10 school systems and their school flashers in those counties. Uh, we also have some of the, we have a, a very large Amish population in Geauga County, so we have the Amish buggy warning systems, we have the flashing overhead lights, we have the flashing stop say, signs, the wrong way signs. Um, so we've got roughly another 80 or 90 signs, flashing signs, electric signs that are involved in that as well too, uh, that are part of our responsibility. Um, we also do the highway lighting uh, for these three districts, most of which is all in uh, Cuyahoga County. There's a little bit in uh, Geauga and, and Lake as well, but mostly in Cuyahoga. So here we have our test cabinet inside our shop and so we can install the software for any intersection that we have. We can install it into our test cabinet and we can run it to make sure that there's going to be no conflicts uh, with any of the existing hardware. Um, we can install all of our hardware as it would be set up in the field for each individual particular intersection. And by doing that, we'll be able to make sure, run for a week or so, make sure that there's no conflicts in the software or with the hardware. Um, gives us a little more confidence, gives us a little more time to tweak things out if we need to do any tweaking. But it'll run the program. We can verify everything through the hardware. And then we also have the test board behind here where we can see exactly what lights are working, the greens, the yellows, the reds, the walk, pedestrian signs. We can verify that everything is in fact working exactly as we have it programmed. Every traffic intersection has conflict monitors which monitor all of the lights, all of the activities in the intersection. Um, and every year we have to swap out the conflict monitors we have to retest them, recertify them every single year. So in order to test them, we run them through the tester. Uh, it takes about 50 minutes or so uh, to do it. And it goes through and it tests every single function uh, of this tester. And then once it's done, it will print out a certification showing that it has been tested uh, and recertified for another year. Each year we have to go through and inspect each of our intersections, each of our signalized intersections. We're going to inspect uh, every piece of equipment in the cabinets, every piece of equipment that's part of that intersection. We're going to verify that the software is connecting to our computers that we talked about earlier. We're going to verify that the network is talking to each of these intersections and we're going to verify that the software that is programmed into the controller is the same software that is going to be on our timing sheets and we're going to go in and we're going to verify that the different timings for each of the phases is what is showing inside this controller. We're also going to verify that the cabinet, all of the electronic drawings for the cabinets are contained inside here. We're going to verify that all of the signal intersection drawings are all up to date and located in the cabinet. We're going to verify the functionality of all of our load packs, our flashers. We're going to verify that everything is functioning properly. We're going to test out 
our ped buttons, we can test them instead of walking to each individual uh, pedestrian pole, we can hit our test switches and we can actually test things from here in our locations. We're going to test and make sure that it's putting a call in to the controller when we hit each of these buttons. As long as I've got an extra person with me when I'm doing these inspections, I can send that person out to each of the locations. He can go hit a button, I can verify, yep, it did hit, in fact, put it in the controller, put it in the load switch. That's working. A lot of times, unfortunately, we have rodent damage that will occur. And when that rodent damage occurs, they'll chew on wires and you'll get a loss, uh, a loss of signal. So if I'm not seeing he's pressing a button and I'm not seeing that it's, that it's being pressed, a lot of times that's gonna be uh, an indication that we've got some rodent damage and we're gonna have to run all new wires. Um, again, the conflict monitor that we talked about earlier, we're gonna swap out our conflict monitor with the new certified conflict monitor and we'll change out our certification in the cabinet. So here we have our battery backup system, our UPS. And so every one of our signalized intersections has one of these UPSs. Uh, it's an uninterruptible power source. And so what this does is if there's ever a power failure, whether it be from storms, uh, downed lines, unfortunately, traffic accidents, things of that nature. So what we need to do is we need to verify that this UPS unit is functioning properly. And what it will do is it will take the juice from the batteries, 24 or 48 volt, depending on the system we have, and it will run through the inverter and it will feed 120 volts back to the sig signal cabinet and it's gonna run for approximately two hours. During our signal inspection, we're going to be inspecting every piece of this signalized intersection. So we're gonna start with our signal pole and our mast arm. The bolts that are securing the pole to the ground. The pole itself, any bolts for the mast arm, pole caps, any wiring that's running up these poles on the outside. The mast arm itself, then we're going to inspect every single device that's hanging from these poles, from these mast arms. So any signs, we'll inspect the signs that are on each of one of these. We're going to inspect every single signal head. We're also going to inspect the pedestrian poles. The pedestrian poles at each of the locations, we're gonna check their functionality to make sure that not only does the button work, but that the walk and don't walk is properly working as well too. Some of the not so fun aspects of the job, uh, working in severe weather conditions and uh, some of the emergencies that we've encountered with them. So as an example, uh, last year we had an intersection where uh, during a severe storm, lightning struck an overhead power line from our power companies, struck it in the worst possible point. The power line itself severed from the lightning, came down on top of one of our signal arms and sent over 7,000 volts of electricity through our whole signalized intersection. Every single piece of equipment inside the cabinet was completely fried. We opened the cabinet, the whole cabinet was black on the inside. Um, the police had mentioned to us that the witnesses that the intersection when it happened, that there were physically flames shooting out of our signal heads. Um, and when we got there, I was finding signal lenses that were 100 feet, 120 feet away from where they were supposed to be, blown further out into the intersection. So we had to replace the entire cabinet, um, all of the equipment inside the, inside the cabinet. Um, we replaced every single signal lens that was out there, some of the heads, every single radar unit that was out there, all the pedestrian heads, uh, everything was completely blown apart fried from the electricity. Unfortunately, we also determined that all of the wiring through the entire intersection, everything that ran through the poles, everything that ran underground, everything was completely melted and fused together. So 
At that point, with the assistance of a contractor who had the heavier equipment, we were able to dig up portions of the road and sidewalk. We were able to get all the uh, wire pulled out and we had to run all new wire through the entire intersection to all the signal heads, to all the radars, to all the pedestrian uh, heads and buttons um, inside the cabinet, re-terminate everything. Uh, this happened uh, on a Saturday. When we first arrived at the intersection, pouring rain. Um, roughly early afternoon on a Saturday. We worked straight through until Monday morning in order to get the entire intersection back up and running in time for rush hour at 6 a.m.